And welcome to a new episode of More Than Dice. I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm John. <laughs> welcome to episode, Kevy. 109? I am not entirely certain of that. Oh, no. I think it's 109. It's just not been the same ever since we hit 100. I just... Three numbers are just so difficult to keep track of, apparently. <laughs> Trust me, I know from my hobby streak. It's really hard to keep track. You think I'd know? I just don't fucking know. Don't know. Does anybody know? Hey, does anybody our listeners know? Give you a bonus points if you can figure it out before I do. I mean, I give you bonus points. You're just going to tell me I'm right. I think. I don't know. I'm just going to tell you you're right. 109 is right. Hooray. So, welcome to episode 109. Uh, today we're going to talk about our local game stores and why it's important and what to do and all that good stuff. Uh, Kathy <laughs> is going to be doing some painting on screen. Uh, I'm going to do some painting also, but you won't be watching me. You'll be watching a real painter. Um, i got to finish up my Marvel Crisis, and then i got to work on my Night Watch, uh, basing them with some good old stone. Here at Chuck. Chuck, Chuck. Ooh, gravel. Gravel. Uh, two different types of gravel that I like to put together. Um, nice. And then that's about it. But before we get started, let's go ahead and give a good shout out to all of our awesome sponsors. Uh, Muse on Minis for hosting us and giving us really cool things. And for giving you an awesome discount code. If you go to Muse on Minis and you want to buy their product, you can get 10% off by using the code word more than dice. And it also helps us. We get a small little affiliate bonus. Uh, we want to thank uh, Creature Caster for sponsoring us uh, and being a part of our podcast. We really appreciate them. Uh, I will be, after my Night Watch is done, I will be painting some uh, judgment models using strictly their paints, um, which is going to be a whole new one for me because I'm going to be actually trying really hard this time. Um, to get stuff done. Uh, we also want to thank Tectonic Craft Studios, Dan the Man. Um, you should be able, a lot of people you're going to be seeing at Adepticon if you're going this year, by the way. Uh, Dan makes some really cool uh, terrain, and uh, recently he's done some really neat stuff for Marvel and all the other things. Uh, who else? Oh, Muse on Minis. Got to thank Muse on Minis, or not Muse on Minis, uh, Metalhead Minis. Uh, they are now hosting our product and uh, selling on our, their website for us which we really, really appreciate. Uh, you should see a link throw up pretty soon uh, with all the products that we'll be selling. Uh, did I miss anybody? Bueller, Bueller. Uh, I think that's it. I think I did. I think I got everybody this time. Um, let's go ahead and go around with our round call. Kathy, what are you drinking tonight? Gin and tonic. What? I'm waiting for the day when you go I'm so shocked. something different. Something that, that costs nope. a lot of money. One day she's going to drink something that I would drink, and then I'm going to drink what she's drinking. And then That's what's going to happen one day. Because it'll be the same thing, though. Well, what am <laughs> I going to be drinking? Be. I don't know. If y'all are going to drink something, you were going to switch your drinks. Who do I switch drinks with? Uh, you could, you're just going to have to uh, drink what we're drinking and enjoy it. Oh, God. As long as it doesn't have Dr. Pepper in it, I'm okay. It's going to be Dr. Pepper. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's going to be Dr. Pepper. Fuck. <laughs> All right. All right. I, 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 I get this. Y'all tell me we all drink the same thing one night, and I will allow one drink of Dr. One drink with Dr. Pepper. How about that? Deal? Yeah. Deal. Oh. All okay. Right. All right. You got you to you 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 give me pre-heads warm-up on this, too. Um, what yeah, is obviously. this dark beverage? It's not Dr. Pepper. So. Uh, John, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, Jim Beam Apple. Straight. Straight? You with your apple yeah. stuff. I am drinking uh, nothing but Maker's Mark tonight. Uh, not a lot, though. Uh, oh, I got a lot to do, but just uh, Maker's Mark up neat. Uh, John, what Thanks. do we need to do for tributes today? 
Unfortunately, quite a few. Uh, um, as you missed every time Kathy and I alluded to it, uh, Kirk Douglas passed this week. Yeah. And he was Spartacus. I was Spartacus. <laughs> I'm Spartacus. Uh, which is, it's, it's interesting. Some people are like, who? And I'm like, how could you not know that man? I mean, he is pretty much... <laughs> The father of Michael The one Douglas. I got was they confused him with Michael Douglas. Oh, I, yeah. I can kind of see that. I, I, just... I understand. Oh, he had a, a brilliant career, though. Yes, he did. Yeah. It's, it's Banyan. Hey, Banyan, I will come down there and I will ninja kick you. I was just going to say I will slap you, but John's closer. <laughs> a little yeah, bit. A couple states. Um. Oh, God, what is the name? They're, they're the gentleman who did the voice of Bilbo Baggins in the Rankin and Bass uh, oh, I didn't hear about that one. Lord of the Rings movies past. Um, oh, which is a super, super classic. And if you've never seen that stuff, that stuff, uh, the Rankin and Bass Lord of the Rings or you Hobbit know what? was amazing. I didn't realize that Rankin Orson and Bass Bean. is the Hobbit. Yes, yeah, so it's for the Hobbit. Yeah, Orson Bean is his name. That's not his original name, but that's his... Uh, Hollywood name, and uh, he died at 91. Um, Kirk Douglas was 103. Which is, um, all these are long lives. That's pretty amazing. Kathy, oh, God, hold on. I have to, so I have to, Ka Captain Mizzy, orange juice and coconut rum does not, no, that, does, that doesn't sound good. Is it good? <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Uh, and then, um, yeah, Kathy dropped one on us that Robert I literally Conrad. had never seen. Robert Conrad. Who I've heard of, but I don't think I've really seen him in anything. I can't believe you've never seen Wild Wild West, the TV series from the 1960s. Or Bob well, Black I'm, Sheep. What? I know of it. I probably I mean, have seen it, but I know what you're talking about. It just doesn't ring, you know. It's not like be I'm fair, really either one of those would have been something my mom watched, and it's not like I grew up with a father in the house. So, oh, yeah, well, not that's a super fair, surprise. I did watch those with my dad, and if he wasn't watching those, I probably wouldn't have watched them. So, yeah, I remember my mom took me to took me to see lots of things, but she wasn't big on some of those TV things. Like sure. she was okay when I got old enough to choose stuff myself i would watch the team and all that stuff and she took me to see all the movies but a lot of stuff that you uh, parent is not necessarily uh stuff sure. i saw uh, i saw some hill street brews how about that because i watched that my mom watched that my mom and dad used to watch that together i never watched that oddly to uh robert conrad and orson bean and to kirk douglas and all of our listeners. All of our listeners. Be safe. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. That's good. All right, I'm going to switch over to um, paint cam so we can actually see Kathy painting in bright, vivid colors. And I am painting with bright, vivid colors. I noticed that. Uh, what paint I have, have, have some fluorescent paint that I'm using for the lava bases and... That is Vallejo model color fluorescent yellow and orange. But I am also... I love the fluorescent colors. I'm also using oh, the uh, the Creature Caster Pro Acryl transparent red. Is that and I'm, I need to get some of their stuff. I need to get some of their stuff. I don't have any of their paints, so I need to get some This is the first the, time I'm try. using this, the transparents. Uh... Jim got a new set, and so he handed me the ones with the old bottles because, you know, he gets the new bottles, I get the old bottles. These are the old shape. They changed the shape and size of the uh, um, of their so bottles, so I, I, got I, don't have, I don't have the new one. I They're, do. Jim has a new one. I so, But they are. Me. They're a different shape, and they're uh, a little bit bigger. Oh, right. They're the same. Yeah. Oh, uh, They just, oh, Jim's just, just handing me one right Aww, now. Jim's <laughs> listening in. Thank That's you, That's because he's awesome. Here's the, here's the difference. Yeah, show us the difference. Oh, yeah, wow. they actually do have a little bit more in a bottle. And they changed the the spout. Oh, did they? Bit. Yeah. 
so it's it's a little different and the pl the plastic bottle is a little bit more squeezy than the old ones which is nice I'm so they squeezy I and they handed you the first bottle yeah, yeah, we're... Unit. Oh. yeah i've got the thin bottle ones that you've got in your left hand not the one in your right yeah. hand Jim has the new bottles. I have the old bottles. Oh, that's because Jim always gets everything before everybody else because he's like super god when it comes to stuff. No, no. He's described as the Bob Ross of intro painting. Okay, we can that's, go with that too. That is true. I can go with that. That's, I can go with that's, that. that's a high compliment. Oh, yeah. That's... Which I learned some stuff from him that's going to go with my uh, Nightwatch army. Uh, doing the uh, green stuff, glass, snow that he... Oh, um, yeah. I saw your dog on Instagram. Or on uh, Facebook, I mean. Yeah. And I recognized your snowy bases. Yep. Learned that from the master. Took me a second to realize he was talking, from, talking about Bob Ross or... <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I learned that from Bob Ross, the crushed glass method. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Look. Like, Look, the whole happy accidents thing has happened several times where I get paint somewhere and I'm like, actually, you know what? I got a new idea. Oh, that wow. happens all the time for me. But that's also how how I learn. I mean, that's how I, I learn new things when I'm painting is from making mistakes. It's It's the failures that actually educate me the most. It, that's most people, though. Uh, the truly exceptional, exceptional people learn from successes, too, which is why they're truly exceptional. I don't. <laughs> I learned, well, I did that thing, it was good. Look, I'll keep doing the thing. Keep doing all the things? Oh. Not all the things. Like, No one can do all the things. You can only do some of the things. In fact, I had lots of talks about that this week at work, of telling people not trying to do all the things, only do some of the things. It's not your position to do all the things. Don't worry about all the things. Everyone out there, don't worry about all the things. Only worry about the things that you can control. If you cannot control it, do not worry about the thing, because you cannot control it. Oh, Be aware of it. But don't let it bother you. Uh, I need more black paint. The leaf, the better sound. It's Try over here. Um, it's right there. It's right oh, there. Think. Thanks. Thanks. If it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't know where my black paint was. That's why we're here. Yep. Kathy, I may be um, asking if I can jump in on your uh, weekly stream. Is that going to be a problem? That will not be a problem at all. That will kind of keep me motivated to get my night watch done. Um, because you're like super motivating and you can yell at me going, Do it, And I'll be like, okay, okay, shit. Crack the whip. Oh. You got it. You got it, my friend. I will crack the whip. Anybody listening now, if you don't see me painting or talking about painting my night watch, you have permission to give me shit until my night watch is painted. There you go. Once it's painted, you can't give me crap anymore. Oh. We can, fair. just not about the night watch. It's not about the night watch. <laughs> oh, that's also fair. I really, I mean, since it's the only thing that I really have to get done, uh, and it's pretty much starting from scratch, uh, I am going to be doing the black in the contrast black, just because I really like the way that black works. Um, but then, of course, mm -hmm. picking out all the detail on them is going to have to be probably with some other paints or whatever. So, remember, you don't, you can use contrast paints whenever you want. You don't have to ask permission. Just, just do it. Everyone oh. out there, just do them when you wish to use them. Sometimes they are the right answer. Sometimes um, they may not be the right answer. Like, and part sometimes of mixing them with other things point. are. Yeah. Like the one thing I really I mean, like to quote a wise man. is I like the browns and I love the red and black. The red makes really, really like, cool red. I like using most of them as uh, super washes more often than not. Yep. Where you really want that wash to stain your base coat as well and get in the cracks. That's when I really like to use them. Oh, yeah. Um, other and than that, tinting. good uses. Yeah, tinting. Okay. Marvel is done. I also like to use them as a glaze medium. So I will add a, uh, a contrast paint to another paint to thin that paint down, and it will increase the drying time of that paint as well. And it will tint that paint. So it's like a three-in-one. 
think it's really good like that, especially for Browns, because, I mean, you, Browns are much more forgiving in the mixing of paints. Shocking. Because they make brown. Well, I know that, like, I really like the browns for the leathers. The yellow's okay. Uh, it's kind of orangey than anything. I really like the black because it makes it a whole lot easier for shading and all that stuff. Uh, the red is amazing. The blues are really good. Um, there's a lot of good. The gray is good. The what? I use grays on bases because I oh, use yeah. gray on, uh, on his base and then follow up with some other stuff. It's it's good. And in fact, gray, they're gray over another gray and then dry brush with yet another gray. It's some good stuff. Oh, I can see that. It's yeah. great apocalypse. Oh, hmm. okay. Before we go on, I have to... so you guys know that I hate Funko Pops, right? Oh yeah, you you can't stand them. I did not you know that. Cannot stand them. Yeah, it, it's, I, it's I just like Funko Pops. America. Well, it's not not that I like Chibi. I just don't like them because it, they, they never really hit right except for a handful of times. So I saw that next to the register at the store, and uh, what'd you say? I had to buy. Like at, at, uh, at my friendly local gaming store. Does it have a hamster on its head? It's Minsk and Boo. Minsk and Boo? <laughs> I was wondering which one you got. <laughs> Is Boo a hamster? I had to. Yes. It's a miniature giant space hamster. Aww. You, oh, Kathy, you got you to gotta look up all the quotes of Minsk and Boo from Baldur's Gate. Holy oh, moly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a classic. You're missing out. A giant space I hamster. I think you might be your spirit animal. I feel like I need a stuffed boo. I mean, like, yeah. I seriously need, need a stuffed, stuffed boo. boo. I need a stuffed giant space hamster. Oh, crap. I think my glue is hardened in the tip. Itch. You know what? Get a uh, side cutter, you know, a little wire cutter, and yeah. just uh, gently cut off that. It's Elmer's or are glue. You Oh, well, I can't help you then. Right. Twist the top off. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get that done. I'm at the point where I have to pop it. Now. You're you're the school teacher, my friend. You should know how to work Shh. Elmer's glue. Don't tell anybody that. Maybe people will expect things of me. <laughs> yeah, it just needs to be cleaned out. So, um, our topic. Y'all want to get on started on that since we've you know talked about all the other things. I uh, sure. I was sitting there, and I haven't had a chance to go to my store in quite a bit because I've been stupid busy. Um, and so, uh, just recently, I got to go, and I was kind of missing being at my local game store. I didn't play a single game, didn't have a time, didn't bring miniatures, uh, but uh, quite a few good conversations came up. And I go, this is the reason why we have you know, the local game store. Because um, we were talking about certain games. Um, and how it is that, you know, you can't, you can, but not many people are going to bring seven different games to a game store when they require, you know, 18 million bags to carry everything like Age of Sigmar, 40k, you know, that's a lot of models. War Machine right. Horror, pretty decent. Uh, a lot of models. Woo! Creature Caster just jumped in and raided with 71 viewers. Hey, <laughs> roll it. lots of love there, Creature Caster. Uh, if nobody's following Creature Caster, you better jump over there and do it. Oh, um, definitely give them a follow. They make these paints that I'm using right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was sitting there talking about uh, the local game store, and I was like, it's interesting that in our digital age and everything that we do a lot of talking on, you know, like discord, Facebook, but there was something about going and talking directly with my local game store owner, talking with my, uh, local friends. And when I said local, they're like an hour North of me, but I consider it my local store. Cause I don't have one in my own area, uh, as much as, as everything else. Uh, then I, Ooh, too much glue. Um, was sitting there thinking about having these conversations. Now, we always want to say we want to support our local people uh, because if you don't have a local store, where are you going to play? Well, of course, you're going to play in the basement or you know whatever that you've got type thing. But these people 
are just like you and I. They're trying to set up a service. They're trying to do a thing. Anybody that opens a local game store and thinks they're going to get rich, they're delusional. <laughs> because everybody knows that, you know, that's not it. So they do it as a hobby, but of course it has to be a business. Uh, doing this. Ah, thanks, War Mini Painting. Um, and you, War Mini Painting. Looking at what was going on <laughs> and talking. Ugh. Got a hair in my mouth. Um, with the local people, there was uh, some interesting conversations. Because now that 3D printing is up and coming, and people are doing it pretty much wherever and whenever they want, we've talked about nobody's going to be, or none of us, will be printing models that you can buy. As in, I'm not going to print an entire Space Marine Army. I'm not going to print off anybody else's you know, miniatures. Different things like guns and stuff like that is going to be okay. We, we've discussed that numerous times. But with the internet and the pricing of models becoming a big thing, small local game stores are having a problem keeping up with the big boys, per se. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just sitting there saying, hey, Blue Bug King, um... So I'm kind of interested on your take on your oh local store. My. <laughs> thanks for the so <laughs> thanks for the follow up, <laughs> Reefaholic. Um, because John, you are a big Kathy, and you are a big support the local game store. Because while we can play in our basement and in our house, there's something about playing and being with the community in the store <laughs> and doing things with. Oh them. yeah, absolutely. I mean, just. Just this Friday, playing, uh, you know, I was playing on one table, then uh, Banyan and Bowie uh, jumped in the table next to us, and in walked uh, an old GW guy who uh, was in town for a Kings of War tournament. So, you know, you get to see people from out of town. We got a bunch of our buddies who we don't, who aren't necessarily in our core group. We get to talk to, and just random people come by. Little kids will come by, see stuff. We'll get lots of, uh, you know, people walk by and, and just take a look at what we're doing. Sometimes they jump in, sometimes they're just interested. I mean, you can't get that at home. No, of course not. Because um, the, the subject that came out that I thought was an interesting one was wargaming. Now, I like a lot of different games. I like a lot of games that aren't played at my store. Uh, like Arena Rex, I think it's a really fun game. Really cool models. Uh, simple and easy. And low model count. Kind of my thing right now is low model count. But hardly anybody plays it. I think I'd like to try the Batman game. Nobody plays it. Um, but at my local store, I can always go, Hey, who wants to play 40 K? And I can usually find, you know, eight to 10 people that'll go, Hey, no problem. I got you. Let's play some 40 K. Um, also games well, that, like, go ahead. Sorry. I'll say like not brush head. Dave and I play Malifaux almost every Friday at the game store. There's no one else who comes up for that. We could literally just come to, to my place, me and Bayon's place and we could play. But we play at the game store because we kind of, you know, it's an easier place to meet. And it also, we got those people around, you know, the stores there. We can buy stuff, see what's come out. We, we get those people around. And once in a while, you just get, you know, good conversation or see someone, you know, in there and just have a good time. It's the social aspect that I always liked about going to the, the local game store. Well, I mean, yeah. you, get to, you get to find people that you have things in common with also. You get to try new things. For example, um, you can play, you know, your game at your house. You can play it against the same people you play with all the time. It's also one of my philosophies about going to tournaments. I'm going to go to as many tournaments as I can, and I'll go to them within a certain radius, depending on, you know, where it's at. And going and playing against other people is great, in my opinion, because you get to, one, learn about new armies. Uh, get to play new things. Build a community that is not just you and your 10 guys at your local store. Um, like our uh, owner uh, is pretty big into Kings of War. And, you know, he's an old grognard type thing. Uh, not you know, that mean and hateful, but definitely is a, you know, an old gamer. And uh, likes Kings of War. I have a blast playing it. And he's like got really good connections with everybody. And it's nice to go... And visit and meet new people. 
Uh, I played against in the Kings of War tournament. I played against the stuff I'd never heard of, never seen, would have never have seen at my local group. And I think that's important because you've got to build not only your local community, but also support your game stores other places. Uh, one of my personal things is, mm-hmm. is anytime I go to a tournament or I go to a local game store for whatever reason, I'm always going to buy something. Even if I win a gift certificate, I'm going to spend the gift certificate plus a little extra because they're not going to get any money, you know, from a lot of people. And I, I just, I miss when people say, well, I bought all my stuff on the internet. And I says, well, why didn't you buy it from, you know, Joe Schmo? He's like, well, it was like $5 more. And I'm like, is that $5 worth it? Now for some people, yeah, it probably is. But and, I'm and you don't, you don't have to spend everything there. It's not like you have to do everything. You pick and choose. Like, I could buy plenty of stuff online, but the savings is almost nothing, and I got to wait and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not going to save, like, five bucks, whatever. Yeah. But if it's, like, more, like, you know, like a box of cards. Like, if I'm going to buy a box of Transformers cards, I usually buy my first one there um, to support them. And then the second one I buy online because they don't give a discount for, uh, for, for boxes of cards there because the savings is significant. I mean, we're talking... You know, 20, almost 30 bucks sometimes. That's really hard to argue with that much savings. But on the average thing where you're saving a buck or two with shipping, probably, it's not worth it. Just buy it at your local store. You got it right there. Go. Uh, I try and split it all up. And also, if you don't buy the stuff there, they're not going to know people are supporting it. And, you know, they might come by and see that you're playing it. But they're not going to know people are, you know, it'll be like, a oh, they come in and play and never buy anything here. So we're not going to go big in that. So, you've got to be careful of that. It's how you show. It's like if I show up for a game night at a store, I buy something at that store. Because I want them to equate game night with purchases coming in. Correct. Um, um, I, I also do it with the tournaments. I, now, asterisks on the tournaments. If the tournament has a hefty entry fee, I will not. Because I, the store is already getting a cut of that, I'm certain. And some stores are more generous than others in that. So, I won't necessarily do anything extra then. Because I'm already showing up, they're already getting my money at that point. Well, most game stores I go to. But if it's to, like go a free event, event, go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say that most of the events that I go to in a tournament, uh, say they take in two hundred dollars, they give oh. back that to the crowd in gift certificates. So I mean, they're getting my money no matter what, um, whether they so give it something I'm gonna else. Say that not every store does that. My local store doesn't do that. My local store does not give as much back as is taken in. So that is why I have that, because not every store is like that. I wish they were. It was great. It's how we used to do it. But is what it is, right? Yep. Kathy's showing off her brushes. Uh, Bug King asked what brushes she's using. Yep. Um, and she was showing them. Are they Copeman or the Kalinske Sables? They say they're Windsors and Newtons. <laughs> oh, my. Drewski, 40K, thanks for the um, follow. And uh, was a mini uh, war mini painting. Says uh, when I owned a game store for four years here in the UK, I was praised by some parents who thanked me for getting their child out of the bedroom and conversing with others. The game store and new friends became their life, which is the best part of the game store. Like I've, uh, I spent the early portion of my professional career at game stores running them. I've managed three game stores as owner of another one in my distant youth. And you are the best friend of those kids. Those kids don't ever want to talk about that stuff. Um, even if it's just talking with you, you're giving that kid or someone else a uh, outlet for their creativity they may not always get. And you can help the parents learn their stuff. Um, that's what I like about a local store. They may not be as super huge on the mini part. They've got some people who know the minis, but maybe not as much in everything. But they really have knowledge of like the 40K, the board games, role-playing games. They have people for everything. And if not, they'll find the local you know, champion or any one of the locals who can talk knowledge about that and put them in touch and suddenly you're, you're helping other people find games they like. Yeah, because like I said, there's, there's something to say about going to a game store and learning against new armies. Uh, one of the things I thought was very interesting mm-hmm. was uh, like I said, going to play in a tournament and then all of a sudden I get to this um, one game one game store and these guys are like, yeah, we go everywhere, and we tournament, and we play, and they kicked my ass. And I learned a lot about the game and interactions, new techniques, and stuff like that, and I thought it was really good. 
Um, and then we, we just started going to a lot more tournaments and learning more and getting better and uh, talking with new people. I mean, I have, especially when I go to conventions, um, I go to my local. And what's weird is we have, in our area, we have my game store, which is an hour north, T-Shirt Explosion. Big shout out to them. Thanks, Brian, for making a great game store. I appreciate you. Uh, he's also a really good guy. Um, but then we have Meta Games that's like three hours above that. Uh, we have Tulsa that's another area over there. We have Little Rock. And it's kind of our own little, you know, Midwest grouping of people. And we all kind of go to everybody's event. And so there's kind of, you know, there's this fun, you know, competitive nature between a lot of the stores. Um, and it, it, you know, it branches out. Because anytime I go to... Uh, metagames, you know, I'm always buying something from them, and they know. We support them, they come down and support us, and it helps out everybody a lot. Um, getting mm -hmm. all your friends together and going to game uh, is what you should do at a game store. Now, if your place doesn't have spots for gaming um, of different types, be it uh, tables for D&D &D or tables for uh, whatever, uh, I, I'm sorry, that's that's kind of why I would go to a game store more than anything. Sure, I'm going to go there to buy stuff, but the ability to get on a table and go play is, like, super important to me. Absolutely. I and, uh, agree the with that. Says that. Another big point is that it uh, exposes you to things you may not have been exposed to otherwise. He says he's picked up uh, Babylon 5, War Machine, and a few other boutique games and other small games because of brick-and-mortar uh, store. That's true. I mean, you'll see a game in there. Like, we pick up board games sometimes. Like, hey, this looks really cool. It's a lot in the game store. Just pick it up. Um, ours actually has a library. Actually, both of my... Not kind of the Games Workshop store. The two closest game stores actually both have board game libraries for that you can just play. Which I think is an amazing and, thing for a game store to have. Because if you like it enough and you're like, dude, I can play this at home. You're most likely going to go pick it up. Well, yeah, I mean, well, the one actually does, purchases. like, has a little... Mm -hmm. I was saying, I've definitely it, made purchases has... at game stores because of uh, being able to play a game at the store, a board game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and the one gets a demo copies or opens a demo copy for games and puts it out there so you can try it out with the staff and all that. And I'm sure those just go in the library, which is great use of it. You're getting double use. You're not only are you demoing it when it's the big new big thing, you get to put it in your library and people are going to play it and maybe get the later game sales out of it. It's great. And it lets you try because sometimes there's a game in there and you're like, I'm not sure this is for me. If they've got it, you can give it a shot and go, okay, this is for me or okay, this is not for me, but now I know for sure. So it's not like I'm going to spend any less money there because the game's not for me. <laughs> I'm going to buy something else. I'm certain I can find something else. <laughs> Captain Mizzy's guilty Gloomhaven. <laughs> Gloomhaven is a very expensive game, but it is a very good game too. It is. It is one we look at, but we don't have enough board gamers to uh, to get that in all the time. So, but uh, I, I mean, if we had a regular board game group, we would absolutely be thinking about that. Well, also, I think another good thing about board games or about game stores, and John, you're really big on this, and is. Uh, story events, journeyman leagues, newbie leagues, stuff like that. Um, because if it wasn't for those, I don't think we would have a lot of people playing the games that we think we would. Because there isn't a lot of people that would, you know, just go out and buy something. If there wasn't people like you working with the game stores or working with people to say, hey, who wants to do a, you know, a newbie league to learn about XY game and see if people are like it or mm -hmm. into it, so on and so forth. Um, I know you've done quite yeah, a Yeah, I mean, of honestly, uh, we did uh, a ton of, uh, you know, journeyman leagues for uh, War Machine of Hordes back in the uh, Drop Zone games uh, days, and we got lots of people uh, in for those. Um, I did the Age of Sigmar one not that long ago at games and stuff. Um, got a bunch of people into that. I think most of them already played. I don't know if we got any new players who are still playing, but at least there's a bunch out there people seeing stuff. And uh, I might eventually do another one. I kind of want to do Star Wars Legion as soon as the, we get another couple clones and droids releases so that they're a bit more even and work out some sort of slow-grow league for that as well. Um, 
you know, just because I think it's one of those new hotnesses that could uh, work that way. Um, so, so we'll see with that. I mean, but it, it takes that. I mean, you got to find the local the local champion and, and get them to help you out with that kind of stuff. Or if there is no local champion, we say this a lot, maybe it's got to be you. <laughs> I'll agree with that. There was, back in the old press gang days, uh, uh, there was, you know, you had to step up. I remember many, many a times going and the store would call and say, hey, I want to run, I want you to run, you know, a demo of War Machine Hordes. I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem, I'll do that. I'll go over there and, you know, I'll, you know, put it on and you sit there for, you know, I think I was at one store for like 15 hours demoing the game and showing it off and, you know, getting people interested. And I think one of the coolest things I ever did was there was a, and, and, and I'm going to do some stereotyping here, some jocks that came in and kind of were making, you know, I wouldn't say rude, but they were like, oh, look at all the nerd stuff and et cetera, et cetera. And I invited them over and we tested out War Machine and Hordes. And this is a long, long time ago. And they were like, yeah, this is actually pretty cool, you know. And I, we had a good time. They played it. They enjoyed, you know, the game. They went and bought, you know, two starter sets. And then I went back uh, like a few months later. And they were now leading, you know, their group and getting people together to play things. And, you know, it was just building a community. And they were like, they come up was like, thanks for showing us that game. I mean, this is shit tons of fun. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of why we do it. I mean, sure, it's nerdy, it's playing with little plastic toys, but it's a ton of fun. I mean, I know a lot of people that, you know, get, got into the game because one person showed them to it, and they got interested, and we have people of all walks of life that play games. I mean, we're in a rare time where being nerdy and geeky is actually beneficial and cool. But if it wasn't for the local yeah, store, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I mean, I wouldn't have met half the people I know now if it wasn't for, you know, miniature gaming and also the local store helping out. Same here. Yeah, me too. And and the funny thing is, Gonzo, I was never a press ganger or anything. Uh, The only company I actually worked in that capacity for was actually Agency Gaming way back when for Babylon 5 Wars. It was a long time ago, but I've demoed GW for people at cons. I mean, it's, it's actually fun demoing for people in the games. Oh, yeah. And, I mean... If you're the kind of person who can do that, has the time, or if you just had the time that weekend, just giving a basic demo to people could be all you need to get more people in your group. Because, honestly, when you go to the local game store and you go and you've got a game that you really like, and you get more people to play it because you did something, that right there to me is yeah. legit. That's what you should be doing. You should be trying to bring more people to play the game because the more people play the game, the longer the game will stay around because more people buy buying product. The store's going to love you because that's, you know, money in their pockets. Yep. And you need to introduce yourself to the store people so they know, oh, someone's coming to look for this game? Oh, I need to take them to talk to John or to Gonzo or to Kathy. That way they know um, who to come to. Because I've had, like, literally uh, one of the guys at uh, that Games and Stuff come up and go, hey, John, they got this, this father and son duo, just bought a two-player starter set. Can you run them through a little game of War Machine or Hordes? I'm like, sure. I run them through real quick. Like at that, I mean, I'm not even playing much anymore, but I'll still run them through. Yeah, I mean, because there's no reason to, like I said, if you're not playing a game, but you know how to play it, you know, teach them. Because mm-hmm. why try to ruin someone else's fun? Now we do give each other a no, little I bit mean, of heck about you know. I have a lot of. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no sorry, that's right. Um. We do, we do razz each other a little bit about different game systems and whatever, but it's friendly and it is, you know, friendly jabs, but it is nothing serious. And if you ever try to do and shame, nerd shame someone based on what they like, screw you. That's, that that annoys the crap out of me. Hold on. What's the motto for this year, Gonzo? Let people have their fun. Yeah. Or as as Banyan saying, don't yuck on people's yum. (laughs) <laughs> uh, either one works just don't, don't you know it's all we can jokes and you know i've had people ask me in a private setting like hey john uh, why don't you play more 40k or this and i'll give them a straight up answer for the reasons i don't like you know 
every game has things I like and don't like about them, and I have to weigh those while playing a game. In the game store, though, if a kid comes by and like, sees me playing Malifaux, he talks about the game he plays, I'm not going to not gonna shit on his game while I'm sitting there. It's cool. Oh, cause it gives he it likes it. It's all good. Yeah, I mean, one, you're you're screwing with them, and, and it's not you're not supposed to nerd hurt anybody or anything. Also, it gives your game a bad rap, too. I mean, and it's really bad to do that, especially in the store, because you possibly lost sales for the store. And yes. it can also help hurt the uh, not help hurt the community of what you're trying to build. Now, like I said, I like I like what he says in a private. Like, hey, why don't you play this game? Well, I don't play this game because of yeah. this reason. I don't do and you, and you give yeah, but... a good reason, not well. That this game just sucks. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, I don't well, like one well, of the reasons I don't like playing Shadowrun. Shadowrun, I love the world of Shadowrun. I think it's amazing. I just don't like rolling 87 million D6s when I want to see if I can walk down the corridor. If I have 87 million D6s, I I want to use them. (laughs) God damn right. (laughs) A perfect example is I walked to register and uh, I had Transformers like, oh, I want a card game in my hand. Like, why don't you try out Keyforge? I'm like, I I don't want to play that game. I was like, like, well, why not? I'm like, it's not my thing. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, there's no deck building or any of that, so it is a one-dimensional hobby. I don't. I want more than that from a card game. Correct. I'm a card game for the playing and for the mental exercise of making decks and all that. And he's like, oh, you know, that's that's a really good point. Mm-hmm. You, you know, and like some deck. people want the up. ready-made deck, and that's fine. Yeah, it's it's some people's gem. Like I could play it. I just, it's not what I wanted from a game. You know, sometimes you go to a game, you've got what you want. And that's such another good thing about the store is if you can, you can find someone to show you that game. Like, I really wish when uh, Alpha Var came out, I had let some people show me how it's played first. Because while it is definitely not a bad game, it is not the game I wanted. What game were we talking about? Alpha Legend R. of the Five Rings. Gotcha. I went, went too fast, I couldn't understand. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> Catch up, Gonzo. Are you talking about the, 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 the role-playing? It takes way longer than I want. I'm guessing you're talking about the card uh, it's, game. It's the card game, yes. Gotcha. Yes. Which is actually a really But yeah, it takes way longer than I wanted. It wasn't all I wanted, so I mean, it's a it's a good game. Like, I would not dissuade anyone from playing it. Just know what it takes going in. And I actually, this one time where I should have let my game store start off through the demos, me take a look and start slowly rather than jumping all in because that's how we go. <laughs> that's how we roll. And it's, it all too often it is. it is, and actually a good friend of the local game store will help you if you do that sometimes because you might find someone who's interested and wants the stuff you have. You know, making deals there is good, but always take it outside to exchange money. Never exchange money in the store. That's a faux pas. Oh yeah, that is a. They understand. Like the stores understand that you're going to make deals and all. That's that's fine, but. Do it outside the park. Show that amount, show that much respect. Yes. Uh, don't ever. I. There was one time this person was selling something to someone else, and they asked the store to break money for them so they could pay someone. And I was like, "Really? Oi. Yeah. Really? I've actually told them like I've actually told people like you can just get me a gift card to the store if you don't have cash. That'll work." And they'll go to the store, get a gift card, and give it to me. That's fine. The store is getting, they know they're getting their cut there. They'll be super happy with that shit. Well, what's interesting is... But if it's our, actual cash, just go outside. Our, uh, our local store has started doing a swap meet to kind of help that. Now, mm-hmm. he charges you like, uh, what's funny is all of his tables, or most of the tables have the, uh, GW, hey, you said that GW plastic terrain, the where it's like two by twos, or um, whatever. And he would the rent The Battle out. Game Board? Yeah. And he would rent out those sections. Um, and he was like, you know, uh, four by four was, you know, certain amount of money. And then he says, here's the thing. You pay the store owner, the store owner gives you, they take a small little cut and it's very minuscule, but then you get it all in store credit. Now, for the most part, I'm okay with that for the simple fact that I'm going to be sending that money on stuff I want in the store to begin with. And also, you can do trading and swapping with, you know, whoever's in the store if you just want to do that, too. But if you're going to be doing hand over cash, like I'm going to give you 45 bucks uh, and it's going to be straight cash, well, that's got to be done outside the store. 
Um, it is considered bad form to do that in front of the store and within it. Yeah. And the store owner knows it. I mean, our store owner actually will, uh, at times, he's like, hey, I really need to get this army sold. I can't get it sold. I don't have, you know, the... Sorry, the eBay rating, or I don't trust myself, and I don't trust other people, and our store owner's like, well, I'll sell it for you, but I'm going to take a cut of it. And I'm like, Psh, if it gets it out of my hair, I do not care. He'll just say, you know, what do you want from it? I'll take this amount, which is okay, because our store owner does a lot of used sales um, on stuff. So, I mean, work with your store no matter what. If your store says, hey, I can't get that for you, Fine, no problem. People understand that. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of things that, you know, people just can't get. Um, especially some, you know, really unheard of obscure stuff. Or, you know, sometimes it's easier just to order it from directly from the company because the store would take forever. Or they have to have a certain amount of sales to get it. Like, I yeah, know that, like, I mean, Battle Foam. Yeah. Battle foam. He uh -huh. just can't order just simple one thing. He's like, all right, guys, I'm doing battle foam order. Who needs what? And then everybody gets together, and then he's able to do the order then. Mm -hmm. But if you're like wanting one small and, and if you and order else, <coughs> do it yourself. And if you order enough stuff from any particular company on the internet, check to see if they support a retailer. Because if you keep ordering stuff, your retailer might be able to get it in. Like it sounds crazy, but there are stores. I've got I have places where I buy base toppers for for my uh, for my Infinity when I was playing that, and I was actually uh, before they went out of business working with them and Drop Zone to get them carrying the stuff because like we're well, using them, people are liking that stuff. John, they're asking you where you got it. We should get in on this. And I talked to that guy, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we do. We 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 will have we have retailer stuff. So you know, you set that stuff up." It's nothing but helpful if that happens. I mean, with the advent of like Etsy and smaller stores like that, not everyone does that, but some do. Um, uh, War Mini Painting, uh, the big problem he found was minimum order quantity, which hampered getting some products for customers. I agree. That's, yes. you know, that's what we're kind of talking about is there. there is a certain amount that's... of quantity or cash that they have to buy. And the store owner should tell you that too. They're like, well, I can, but I have to have a certain amount to do it. So unless you're buying a whole mm -hmm. bunch of stuff or you get a whole bunch of people ordering it, I, you know, I can't get it for you. Yeah. And, and the store owner should definitely share that. Um, it should not be some secret code that we cannot decode. Okay. So first off, let, let me spoil this. I've worked at a distributor. I know how this shit works. So you can, you can say you can't get it to me. And I know there's multiple ways you might not be able to get it, but you should explain that. So that way they have the proper reasoning. Because you might be like, oh, you have to order this much amount of money from this one supply. Like, oh, sure, I'll get all my buddies. We're going to put this big order in. We're going to help you out. You can add a little bit of stuff you need for your other people onto our order. You know, now you're getting there. And a lot of stores give you a discount if you get to, uh, if you uh, uh, special order stuff because it means they're not keeping it in stock. It's instant sales. There's no stock space and any of that. Uh, less work involved with it generally. So. You know, talk to your store before you just go and, and buy it online if it's something that you might want to get there. Like, if it's no hurry, see if they can do it. Like, mm -hmm. secret weapon bases. Sometimes I need them right away. I'll order direct from the website, or I have enough to order from the website. Sometimes I just need a pack or two. I'm like, hey, can you guys order this and let me know where they're in? Yeah. No hurry. Hey, Kathy. Uh, we, I'm sure I have other bottles I can work on. Hey, what? what? We've been kind of monopolizing the, uh, the time over here and talking about stuff. Um, you want to talk about your miniature and what you're painting and the colors and, you know, give your little spiel rundown on it? I know some <laughs> people are like, what is Kathy doing? She's awesome. Can you teach these me? These are, uh, these are, these are the splintered fang that I have been painting for the last couple of weeks. And then I also built the bases on my stream. So I stream on this very same channel every week Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday for those of you who are new uh, and mainly I'm painting although I did take one week and I built the bases for these guys on my stream that was an adventure I had never I had never tried building bases while streaming in this tiny little area and uh, <laughs> so that was that was actually a lot of fun but this project with the splintered fang is something that my husband, and I are collaborating on, well, 
we really just split up. I have four, he has five, and uh, we're both painting them for a charity raffle that Table Wars is going to do at Adepticon. They're doing, uh, they're raising money for autism advocacy. And we, we said, hey, yeah, we will, uh, we'll paint something up for that. And at Horror Mini Painting, says Kathy, you said it was the 101st Airborne World War II. Yes. I mean, doesn't it look just like them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I saw that guy on Band of Brothers, right? I'm pretty sure they landed right in the center of the Earth. That was that was actually the secret. Uh, that was the secret, secret you know, infiltration of the Nazi uh, Lucidar thing at the <laughs> Earth's core. Yeah, I'm just making shit up now. <laughs> <laughs> it's good shit though. <laughs> why, why, did, uh, why did y'all decide to do uh, lava base? I mean, are those models from a area that's like that, or just because it, lava's fucking cool? Now, I really don't know anything about the lore of the Splintered Fang uh, people, but I just know that they are one of the factions vying for the approval of the Chaos Gods in Warcry. And Jim and I just were like, well, the, the battle mat that's being provided by Table War for this raffle, the raffle is this... Splintered Fang faction and a faction that's being painted by Caleb Wissenbach of CK Studios okay. and a, a tray for each faction and a Table Wars uh, case to carry them in and uh, one of Table Wars fat mats. Nice. That's a double sided map for <sighs> Warcry. And uh, so one of the sides is lava. So we said we will. Uh, We'll do lava bases, bases. and it'll be fun to do object source lighting on these models. And then everybody was like, if they're standing right in the middle of a bunch of lava rocks, why are they all barefoot? And I'm like, you bring up a good point. Because they're badass. Their pain is their sacrifice to their chaos god. Yeah. So there. (laughs) (laughs) I got one unit based. Go over here. One unit and two attachments. Uh, War mini paintings uh, also paint, painting splintered fang. I feel like it's a paint along uh, with. I'm sorry, John. Paint along. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say War mini painting and uh, a couple other people who show up in my chat when I'm streaming from time to time are also painting these while I'm painting them. <laughs> but what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, I mean, I'm not painting anything, but I looked at a bunch of models. Does that count? Yes. I'm going to say yes, because this morning I did spend some time looking at the Suzerain of Desire, which is also known as the Twins, but I think Suzerain of Desire is much more poetic. Absolutely. And I just and I just was holding parts of it and staring at them and f- trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to fit some of this stuff together and what kind of green stuff I gotta I have to do on it. So, <laughs> looking at models to to get ideas and try and figure things out is completely valid. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to paint the thing's base. Yes. Um, what thing? This thing. The thing. What thing? Ben Jones. Not Ben Jones. Ben, wait, what's his last name? Ben Graham. Ben Graham, I knew that. I was confusing that Ben with another one. The thing. All the things? Or just that thing? Just that thing. Just that thing? It's the only thing. The only thing that matters. Until they make the man thing, then there's two things. What about the child thing? I don't know what the child thing is. I don't know what the man thing is. I mean, I have ideas, but I think they're wrong. It, it, man thing is basically Swamp Thing for Marvel. 
I love Swamp Thing. <laughs> it's Swamp Thing for Marvel. He's not as intelligent. He's much more of a, a plant of nature. He's, he's much more of a plant. I mean, yeah, he's he has the IQ of a house plant. I don't know about that. I mean, that's not really nice. Try not to judge like that. Have you made up your own rules for thing yet? Or are you just painting them up just to paint them up? I'm going to use them as the Hulk. Oh, you're going to use them as the Hulk? Here is my Hulk yeah. proxy. Yeah. That's fair. Until you get Until your Hulk. Until they actually don't like come it? out uh, with a, you know. Uh, Gonzo, I have the Hulk. I'm not planning on painting them anytime soon. No. <laughs> because the thing is better. Because the, the thing is better. Sorry, all you Hulk fans. <laughs> I, I like the thing a lot better. He's a much more interesting character. I agree. Now, it was Hulk from Endgame. Hulk from Endgame is actually, Professor Hulk is actually pretty amusing. He he and the thing, that's a good team up. I would watch that buddy comedy immediately. Yes. But uh, they haven't done that yet, but I, I'm a big fan of the thing. He's always my favorite member of the Fantastic One. So. And one of my favorite members of the Guardians of the Galaxy. What? what? Also, one of my favorite Avengers men. Is he an Avenger now? He's he's been all of those things. He's been all of those things and more. All of those things, yes, and more. What do you think? About he's a founding the... member of the West Coast Avengers. Back when it was West Coast Avengers. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's a long time ago. Yeah, that thing happened. What do you think about them rebooting the uh, the Fantastic Four again? I have I mean, no they problem have to with because that. Because Marvel has the rights now. I didn't watch. Th I have only seen the first two Fantastic Four movies, and no, I don't mean Rise of the Silver Surfer. You know which two I mean. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I don't know how bad they were after that, but I've heard they're bad, and I have standards. I mean, says the guy who's seen cats. I, I mean, I technically <laughs> have standards. No one has. Paid for my ticket and bought me lunch afterwards to watch those shit movies. So I have not watched those shit movies. I can't believe he didn't feed you alcohol first, though, to be fair. Okay, it was kind of like 11 a.m. in the morning. That's irrelevant. I didn't have to drive 45 minutes to get there, basically. Eh, maybe half an hour. But you it was a bit drive. of a drive. So you had to drive? Or did he have to drive? Well, so... If Norrin picked me up, and it wasn't necessarily Norrin's fault, Norrin would have to drive 15 minutes to get me, and then a half an hour to the place. That's not really fair. Mm -hmm. And if, we're, if Morton Joe were to pick me up, he would have to drive 30 minutes to my place, and then 30 minutes there. And that's not really fair. Besides, it's not like it was a date. Just because he's bringing him to the movies doesn't mean he has to pick him up. Oh, God, if that was a date, it ends in murder. I mean, what? <laughs> Oh, uh, just so I think it's as good a segue in the movie section as anything. Just so everybody knows, where do they go? Did I hide them again? Uh, for all of our Patreon subscribers, um, where are they? Did I hide them? I hit them again. Let's see if I can find them real quick. Our magnet? Yes, our magnets are in, and I will be sending these out next week because uh, Patreon has given it. So, for the people that are on Patreon, um, our magnets came in. We will be sending those out to all of our subscribers. Uh, that will be sometime this week. So be ready for it. Be super, super cool. I was going to grab the magnet I have over here, Gonzo, but then I quickly realized it's the wrong magnet. <laughs> you know what magnet it is. It's like, oh, that's that's not going to work. That's yeah. not, no. Well, you have one coming. And if Banyan does if Banyan doesn't wake up tomorrow morning, it is totally not my fault. Are you going to beat him up or something? No. It's totally not my fault. <laughs> Just saying. Totally not my fault. Okay. Uh, uh, movies. Gonzo, how Ooh. many thousands have you watched? Uh, I don't have hardly any. I only have like three this time. We're, uh, we're going to leave it here and watch uh, Kathy Paints uh, while she's doing that. And we'll uh, we'll keep that going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, instead of moving the screen around. And I'm trying to get okay. one more unit based. Um. Elmer's glue and sand. And I think Kathy's got just uh, 
the time thingy if she wants to talk about archaeology and such. I think I already did that. Oh, well, that was in the free ramble. You can talk more about archaeology. We, we can give you that. I've got two, and they both star Kirk Douglas. Because Nice. Um, so, for those who are new to the podcast, 8 o'clock is when we start our media section. That's when we s- almost stop talking about the games and start <laughs> talking about movies, TV shows, uh, books we've read, music we've listened to, uh Netflix that we binged. Uh, this is our media section. Uh, War Mini Painting, I am basing my Night Watch for Adepticon. I have 36 plus models. I have 37 some of my models to paint. <coughs> Whew. And I got to get them all done. We're cracking the whip on him. Yeah. He's already behind. I'm way behind. He's 47 <laughs> days. Because... Luckily, it's Night Watch. I don't know how so full this was now. Oh. Okay, so Kathy, what is your what is your one that you watch this uh, archaeology thing? Well, this is something that I, Jim and I have been binging a few episodes a night for a while, uh, and it's called Time Team. Mm-hmm. It's a British series, and I don't know that it's actually still in production, but I think they started in the nineties. Uh, based on an episode you're watching the other day, and and uh, well, this particular one wasn't necessarily in the '90s, but anyways, the guy's getting online to to look something uh, up, and I could hear the, huh? It's 1994 to uh, 2014. Oh, thank you. So oh. I could hear the dial-up as he was <laughs> as he was. So. What it is, is a group of archaeologists and Tony Robinson, and he's kind of the, the face of the, the team. He's pretty charismatic, and, but everybody else is, they're archaeologists of one sort or another and varying specialties, and they go around to all these different places. Uh, the first one I saw, they were in Spain. Uh, they've been in France digging up a Spitfire, uh, but mostly they're in uh, the UK digging up archaeology there. And anytime they do it, it's for a particular purpose, like the Spitfire was. Uh, but they have only three <laughs> days in which to dig their trenches and uh, get their finds and examine them and... <coughs> You know, have them, you know, conserved and preserved and analyzed and everything so that they can figure out, they can get an idea of the history of that site and what might have happened there. And I have always liked archaeology, like forever. Ever since, ever since the Maya were discovered and I read the National Geographic in the 1970s, I think I was like six seven i was looking at pictures and puzzling my way through it and it it was like some kind of myth you know with all these these huge pyramids in in mesoamerica it was fascinating and then you know indiana jones and you know all of that craziness War Mini, War Mini Painting says, Time Team is awesome. I have that on YouTube sometimes when painting. I watch it every day when I'm exercising. <laughs> In addition to me well, and Jim watching it. So, but yeah, that, that's the thing that, that we've been watching and and I, I enjoy it. It's, it's, I like the well, history. Of it, I, I like the documentaries. What's up? You've got 280 episodes to work through. Excellent. Then there, we shouldn't have too much overlap when Jim and I watch it for versus when I'm exercising. <laughs> There's actually one I saw when I was exercising that I have to play for Jim because it's one where the uh, the team are asked to examine uh, this area on this one guy's property and 
it looks like there's a whole bunch of artifacts there from a bunch of different times and it makes no sense the the way that they're that they're coming up and they have if no context the context is incorrect and it turned out to be like somebody purposely put all of these artifacts from you know a bunch of different ancient times into this one area with no context whatsoever just, so you know the archaeologist it just breaks their heart because they can't learn anything from it because it's not in its context they can't learn any oh, history me, about those artifacts trolls yeah they're replaced by trolls yeah pretty much <laughs> I respect the long game of trolling, but... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, or Mini Painting says, how do you like the guy with the long hair, hat, and the real southern Somerset accent? I love Phil. Phil is awesome. I like all of them. But yeah, Phil is, is fantastic. The guy with the long hair and the hat. And later on, Tony Robinson has some other special that's not Time Team. And... He's going, oh, it's a, it's a special about the Ichneal Way, I think. It's this ancient track spanning uh, parts of Britain. And he's one of the people who makes a, a cameo appearance in it. When they're all much older. So that was amusing. Anyways, so... What what else do you guys have? I'm done talking about time team. <laughs> I got a quickie one. Um, so of course you know we finished. Um, it was Friday, and my kids, you know, the ones that earned it, got to watch. You know, the rest of Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beast. And you know, being that you know I'm watching it, it's the last episode, and um, so slight spoiler, uh, there is a. Uh, a gay character in it, and he actually gets a crush on another character in the story. And as a teacher, I'm always, you know, bracing for stuff. There isn't a reason why I should shield my kids from this. There's no reason whatsoever. Um, and my kids are third and fourth graders. They've seen this um, and everything. So I was looking for, you know, what was going to happen. I wanted to see, you know, the reaction. And it, it kind of cracked me up because there was a reaction between, you know, a guy and a girl and they were like "Ooh, gross and then the same thing they treated it exactly the same thing as two kids seeing you know mom and dad kiss on screen you know a mom and dad kissing or whatever and it was like uh -huh. it, it, it was really good and refreshing to you know for my kids to go yeah we understand but that's still gross because they don't care for that stuff because they're so young but it, they didn't you know point out that that was inappropriate or you know they didn't you know do whatever you know to, to throw it out or stuff they just thought it was something normal and natural and didn't care and i thought that was really interesting uh from a teacher's perspective because of course when i was in school that would have never have happened um and such uh but for anybody that's watching i still give kipo uh age of the wonder beast uh watch it with my kids they enjoyed every minute of it they thought it was hilarious. They were upset that it was over. They can't wait for the new season. <laughs> They're desperately wanting it to come out more. Um, they're hooked. The, it's it's a great little series. Um, it's got really unique art. It's got a really unique world. Um, so, I mean, it was very interesting to see. Can't wait for the second season. It was really interesting for my kids. Um, they went hog wild over it and really loved it. Um, we also talked about, you know, some aspects of it cause you know, one of the characters is part mutant and how they're different from everybody else. And they were like, well, that's just, you know, who they are. And, you know, I also use it as a teaching moment. Don't get me wrong. Um, I do incorporate some of the story and we talk about personalities and I, I'm still a teacher at heart and stuff, but they, uh, they really enjoyed it, uh, from all aspects and I can't wait for the next season. I keep my same ratings as you know like a one uh zero to one because it's just so interesting and fun um to go through so <laughs> love it and also for those of you who are new to us uh we rate on the scale of space therapy so lower is better generally oh. speaking <laughs> 
Because nobody wants space for Explain herpes. that when we get rated. Because yeah. yes, <laughs> yes indeed. So zero to one is great. Five is generally the worst movie ever. Cats. Yes. Does Cats ra- uh, is, is Cats our new standard instead of uh, Atlantic Rim? Yes. I said that on the episode, yes. <laughs> on a scale of Castle Blanket of Cats, I rate this movie whatever. <laughs> yes, I actually specifically asked that, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to do mine in reverse order when I watch them. The uh, second one I watched is actually 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which does indeed star the late Kirk Douglas. Nice. I haven't seen that in forever. Uh, it's on Disney+. Plus. It was one of the first movies I put I on my watch that. list, actually. And, uh, yeah, um, it's old. <laughs> it, uh, I mean... So we generally rate movies that are older by different standards because it's old. They didn't have the same pacing. Uh, society had not become so super cell phone, you know, savvy that you can't let them become distracted for two seconds or on their cell phone. Um, it is definitely an enjoyable movie. It does show its age a bit. Um, but luckily, as it is a period piece for the uh, uh, 1800s, it does still hold up pretty well because they're trying to be a period piece for that so there's nothing technology wise that's super strange because it's all sort of sci-fi the whole plot if you somehow don't know the plot of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is there are rumors of a sea monster uh, between uh, Shanghai and San Francisco that's been attacking ships Uh, it has made a uh, professor Professor Pierre Aranax played by Paul Lucas uh not able to get where he's supposed to go, which is not actually Shanghai, it's another city in the uh, Orient there, and his uh, assistant, to play by Peter Lorre from Casablanca, actually. Oh, yes, Peter Lorre. And they can't get there, so the U.S. government hires them, because he's an expert on sea creatures, to sort of go out with a warship and sort of maybe, you know, either confirm or deny that there's a sea monster. Uh, Kirk Douglas's character, Ned Land, is put on because oh, he is an, an expert harpooner. And if there's a sea monster, he will get a lot of pay for harpooning it. Thank you for the follow, Brett Cross. Um, yeah. uh, again, it is kind of old. It does play out sort of is Disney, so there are a lot of Disney things. And I'll be honest, this movie would not be made like this uh, these days. There are, like, zero female characters. There are two females who show up on the arms of said Kirk Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it. Um, there are no racial diversity in this cast, and I don't really hold against 1959, I think it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, understandable, it is uh, 1954, 20 years before I was born, holy moly. Um, <laughs> so, there you go, it is It is kind of slow, never uninteresting, but slow, a little bit ponderous at points, um, very dizzy, a little goofy at points, um, but overall, an enjoyable take on, a, you know, a classic piece of fiction. Um, I would love to see a modern retelling, and apparently there are multiple companies working on something like that. Um, Kirk Douglas, is a, his charisma comes through the whole time. He is obviously the most charismatic person on this cast by a long stretch. Um, he's usually enjoyable when he's on scene. He's a little extra goofy, but that's sort of the time and the Disney fight of it. That's, that's what Disney was. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not like this is groundbreaking in any fashion. It is, you know, pretty standard Disney fare. But it's enjoyable. If you got a little over two hours, give it a watch. I enjoyed the crap out of it. Uh, I am not going to rate it in Space Herpes. It's old enough. I'm going to rate it on the Casablanca scale. I give it four out of five Casablancas. Nice. Uh, and to answer more mini, more mini painting, uh, Magnificent Seven is also one of my favorite westerns, the original. Um, oh, yeah. That's it's uh, fantastic. With Steve McQueen, James Coburn, and Charles Bronson. Robert uh, Vaughn. Brenner, Robert Vaughn. Who gets to play that exact same role again in Battle Beyond the Stars? This is another one of my favorites for totally different reasons. <laughs> the Man from Uncle. Oh, so, I will say, yeah, Man from Uncle. I will say, if you like Magnificent Seven, I do suggest checking out the original source material, which is Seven Samurai, which is also a very good movie, and they are different enough that they're both very much worth watching. Uh, Gonzo, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is I binge watched all of Lock and Key. Uh, people don't know, Lock and Key is based off of a graphic novel series, which I will freely admit I've never read the graphic novel. I know of the graphic novel. 
I, you know, have heard about it. It's always gotten good ratings. It's always gotten good reviews. Uh, so on and so forth. Um, Lock and Key is about a story of kids that uh, their father had been murdered and their mother was shot. And they moved to their ancestral, you know, family home in Massachusetts. And they find out that there's these keys within the house that open up doors in the house. And uh, depending on what the key is, depending on what the door is, does certain things. Uh, open up dimensions, you know, whatever. Um, and of course, there's this, there's going to be a bad guy that wants to um, take the keys, use them for their whatever. Um, Ten episodes. Each episode is about 45 minutes to an hour long, I believe. About 50 to an hour long. Um, the cast of characters is really good. Um... The young kid, Brody, is played by the kid in It that says, uh, uh, we all float down here, which is kind of interesting to see him in that role, because uh, that's where I remember him from. Um, a couple of casting characters from different things. There's some breakout new, new actors in it. Um, the oldest teenage son is from American Crime uh, Stories, which I thought was an amazing TV series when it came out. I hate that they stopped doing it. Um, uh, but, uh, it is very much, uh, it does have a lot of, I don't want to say teen drama, but it is focused around, uh, some high school aspects that's going on, uh, because certain keys can do certain things. Uh, there's, you know, different ones. Um, and I'm trying to do this without spoiling it because there's some really cool things that go on in this show. Um, I watched the entire series. None of the episodes were dragging along. None of the episodes were boring. You know, there wasn't like any filler episodes, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, they did do some flashbacks so you can learn about the different characters, learn more about the father, you know, why everything's happening, uh, play back on things. Um, they uh, find these keys and start testing them out and start doing things. Of course, they do some stuff without, you know, thinking about it, which leads to some problems. Um... I'm not sure how much of this was filmed on a set, but the house at the, the lock house uh, that they show is an amazing looking house from the outside, even with it, you know, being as old. I would love to have a house like this because uh, it's based <laughs> off somewhere in Massachusetts. I just don't know where some seaside town, um, but it uh, it was a very cool looking house on the inside and out. Uh, very cool area. Uh, it's during the middle of winter. The uh, kids start uh, showing and being who they are and start happening. Um, there are different things that you know are going to happen and you're waiting for it, which is not bad because you're kind of, they show some of it in the previews. Um, the, the side characters are actually pretty decent. Um, they're very, it's very a diverse cast all the way around. I don't know how well it translates from the uh, graphic novel to, you know, the show, because I never read it. But I was I was completely happy with what was going on. Um, I was like, oh, shit, you know, well, that just happened. Uh, well, that was, you know, that was cool. That was neat. Uh, so I was really happy. Uh, I can't wait for season two. I'm sure it's going to be a big enough hit that season two is going to come out. Um and, of course, they, they left it open enough so season two will come out. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, special effects were pretty good. Um, everything fit. Like I said, I don't know how. I, I can't rate it between the graphic novel to the, you know, the TV show. But it was definitely enjoyable. And I really liked it a lot. Uh, I give it zero to, like, half a Space Herpes. And that's kind of just pushing it because I really, really enjoyed everything that was happening. I want to see where everything else is going in the next season. Um, I want to see how... Because they, they do leave a lot of stuff open. Uh, if they were going to say this was the end of the se season and just make it a series, I'd be like, oh, there's a lot of plot holes here. Uh, there's a lot of open-end stories. But since I know that you know it's coming up still, I'm not too worried about it. Um but I really enjoyed it. Um, it is like a long watch. It is 10 episodes, about like 50 minutes. So you really got to binge it if you're going to watch it all. If not, 
go have fun with it. It gives you, you do get a good, uh, and I, I say this not as a copy, but as a, as a good vibe. You did, do get a good uh, Stranger Things vibe. Uh, and not in a nostalgia way, but in is a bunch of kids having to deal with shitty world world supernatural problems type thing. Get some bicycles. <laughs> um, but it was good. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, so like I said, it's half a space to zero, in my opinion. I liked it a lot. Can't wait for more. Cool. Uh, well, Kathy, I'm going to let you know real quick that you missed uh, Gonzo and my review of Picard last week. We both saw the first episode. Oh, uh, yeah. So. I but, imagine uh, you liked it. The second movie I've... I watched. Go I've only heard good things about Picard, but that's because I know a lot of Trekkies. Let's just say that I will eventually be getting uh, CBS All Access, Bane and I, just so we can watch all that and Discovery because I want to see more. So, my second movie is actually the only movie I actually own on DVD or Blu ray that actually stars Kirk Douglas. And that is called The Final Countdown, which uh, I'm not going to be surprised if no one's heard of because it's not one of those movies a lot of people have heard of. It was a big cable fair back in the day, um, but it's a 1980 movie about uh, the USS Nimitz, and it goes back in time to Pearl Harbor, basically, right before Pearl Harbor is attacked by the Japanese. Um, it's sort of this weird combination of military, you know, I don't know, military porn. It's not really like lots of violence or anything. In fact, it's a relatively low violence movie. But it has great, great shots of the Nimitz and its fighter wings. Um, they did a lot of great jobs filming that. And that is honestly the main reason you're going to watch a lot of this. Um, it's also got some good speculative science fiction because it does involve time travel and, you know, paradoxes, predestination, was this always supposed to happen? Uh, they don't bother explaining how it traveled through time. There's a weird storm at sea, it passes through, and then they're back in the past. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, it eventually goes back at the end, um, but the, I'm not going to spoil sort of like the the everything for it. But there is some points in there you go, you know, is time predestined to happen? Um, some of the characters argue about that, but being that it's military guys, they don't get too heavy into it because they're not really philosophy types. The military, you know, it becomes a big thing. Here before uh, Pearl Harbor is attacked, do we go destroy the Japanese fleet before they can destroy Pearl Harbor? You know, what, what do we do? That's sort of the main premise of the film. Um, aside from uh, Kirk Douglas, it does actually also star Martin Sheen uh, and <laughs> Catherine Ross, James uh, Ferentino, and Charles Dunning. Uh, James Ferentino, you will only note if you watch a lot of TV because he has a lot, a lot of TV. Uh, credits and not a lot of movie credits and he always looks familiar to me and that's because he actually played in the very short-lived blue thunder tv show as oh, the main character i watched that very short -lived. yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah i did also because i love blue thunder uh and then Catherine ross is probably best known for being in the graduate as mrs robinson um but Again, this is a movie you're going to watch. I just, if you like, if you want to see cool scenes of jets flying around and taking off America carriers and stuff like that, you should see this movie at least once. There is a great scene of two F-14s versus two Zeros. And no, it's not a fair fight in any way, shape, or form. But it's a very fun, fun scene to watch. Um, and it, it's some good light sci-fi if you want some good, you know, well, you know, time travel thinking, like, you know, was this predestined to happen? You know, what's going on? And it, it doesn't smack you in the face with that sort of thoughts. You have to sort of get there yourself when you start going, well, shit, this and this, did it, like, did, did this, you know, how does this happen? You know, is it supposed to happen? Did, is it like a time loop where it has to happen for, so it can happen? You know, what's going on? So it's good light fare for that sci-fi wise. But other than that, it's just, you know, cool military uh, Navy porn. And uh, I enjoy the crap out of it. This is not quite old enough to rate on the Casablanca scale, um, so it gets space herpes, and it'll get two of them, because <laughs> it's not a lot much to it. I mean, a, a modern version of it would have a lot more to it, 
I'm not sure it would necessarily be as good, but it would be more exciting all the way through. It's another sort of slow burn because it is a 1980 movie and they hadn't quite gotten to that frantic pace they put a lot of movies through nowadays. But I, I also think it is also rarely boring um, and a lot of cool visuals to watch. So, And Kirk Douglas is great. I mean, his charisma shines through. He's the captain of the ship. Uh, there's like really a scene at the end where his charisma really, really shines through. You realize why he was such a big star for his day. Gonzo, I think it's just enough time for your uh, number three. Um, and I really oh, can't remember what my number three was. Pick. What are you doing, no Gonzo? Crinkle, 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 crinkle. Sorry, I was picking up my uh, bag of my sand and moving it. Uh huh. He's just eating Cheetos. Just eating Cheetos. Actually, I don't even remember what my third one was. Dang it, I forgot to write it down. I guess it can't be that good. No, it probably wasn't. I've been I've been trying to catch up on it. Like I'm trying to re- watch the rest of Vikings. Uh, I'm on the this is the last season. I know that we still only got a few more episodes left, and I started talking about somebody about it uh, because uh, someone else had started getting into uh, Peaky Blinders. Erica had got into uh, Peaky Blinders, and we were watching that, and it reminded me that I needed to watch the last few episodes of that too. Um, I'm like, I'm like just the end of a lot of good TV shows. And, uh, I remembered that I still had Vikings to watch cause this is the final season. And, uh, there was some pretty good stuff in that, but I totally forgot. I mean, I, I'm not going to give a final review. I'm going to give a final review of the season and then a final review of the series once it's done, uh, and give that. But so far I've, I, I love Vikings. I think it's a great TV show. Um, is it hundred percent accurate? Hell no. Is it damn good yeah, fun TV? Yes. Uh, is it great sets and great uh, story and great characters? Yes. So uh, I tried to start rewatching Justified and found that it's not on Amazon Prime anymore, so I cannot. Oh, Justified so was... was so good too. Yeah, I'm not sure that. I really need to rewatch a series of all the ones I haven't seen, but man, I really enjoy that, and I never got a chance to see this, the final season, though I've seen a ton of clips from it, so I know. Yeah. Broad picture. Which is sort of the only way it could have ended going through it. You yes. sort of knew that was coming. That was a that was a good TV show. Uh, I, you know what's funny is you're sitting there like, man, that was such a good TV show. Why'd they stop? And you go like, because they needed to stop. You don't have to because they were done. It in. Yeah, it didn't have to be. You didn't have to keep oh. going for the money. On War Many Paintings hitting one of my things. Uh, War Many Painting. I love Black Hawk Down. Yeah, uh, I have the Blu-ray. It's got all the uh, the two specials on the battle there. Um, yeah, I also bought the book. If you do not have the book, War Money Painting, buy the book. The book is one of the best written pieces of nonfiction I have ever read. It is super good. I heartily suggest it. I love Black Hawk Down. I don't know what it is. It's, it's just that kind of war movie I can get behind. It is quite probably my favorite war movie. Uh, they're a lot of people that um, feels that. you know yeah it's uh it's tough when i can't talk about it to all my friends i have friends who had friends there and they don't want to talk about it so yeah so you watch the documentaries documentaries are real good too but the book man the book is is better than the movie you see the real stuff that happened um some of the characters got changed um Sergeant Star- Star- sergeant eversman who's sort of the main character of it isn't even in Mogadishu when the whole shit goes down. He actually gets out on the convoy and there's a different sergeant, but he is of Latino descent who is the main character. So, well, main character. The one who's stuck there is sort of in charge, so they couldn't really do that in a movie because that's not really that time. They wouldn't. Have, it would have been wrong for the time for the film industry, which is a terrible thing to say, but it's true. Um, well, Benny, and luckily you can watch Black Hawk Down whenever you want because I own it. It's up on the shelf. <laughs> There you go. There's a, a sign. I do have to finish. Um, it's because of Baney on. I know he'll like this. I got to finish watching. Um, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Um, a few episodes shy of that too. So um, I think I still got that to finish. I'm up. so far behind on everything. Oh, we're all I got to finish Expanse season, whatever season. Whatever. It's the most Four. recent season. Sure. Yeah. Whatever that is. I have to watch that. But last week was so busy, I didn't have a chance to start, and I don't want to. 
I might start this week because I know Monday we're off. So oh, I don't have nice. anything but role playing that day. Yay. So I can like watch a couple episodes if I need to finish it up or get a good chunk of it done. Um, also, uh, don't forget to follow and watch Kathy Tuesday through Friday uh, as she paints. I may yeah. be jumping in there with her and working on some models. Also, Wednesday, uh, the new episode of Fall of Mirkwood. My One Ring RPG will be coming back. We had to take a week off. We should be back this week. Um, we don't stream it, but and, we record it. And John? Okay. Are you? And you may see a return of an old friend. Sewer Bear? Or maybe sewer even bear? a sewer bear in our future. <laughs> Might be. You know, Might we talked about getting our game back together. Fantastic. And, uh, Creekin said that she missed playing uh, Sewer Bear, so we might uh, jump back into Sewer Bear. We're going to take a look at a couple things real quick and then decide. Nice. Um, guys, if you don't follow us on Patreon and you want to support us, that's our that's the best way to support us. We only charge, even though we do charge per episode, we only we don't ever charge for more than four episodes at a time. And you could, you could potentially get about ten episodes of stuff for one month's worth of four episodes, so... <laughs> Uh, it's a really good bargain. We understand that some people can't afford every episode, so we only charge a maximum of four. Uh, we do have some new rewards on there. Um, you can uh, force John, Kathy, and I to watch a movie of your choice, and we have to watch it. Mm -hmm. uh, we will make an exception to certain things that are inappropriate or uh, things that are impossible to get a hold of. Um, but if it I, is... I won't make an exception appropriate. I'll watch it. I don't fucking care. I just, <laughs> if it's hard to get a hold of, it's the only thing I got to worry about. Um, but we do have that. Um, I still can. Uh, also, the five dollar level, you get advanced screening of uh, mine and John's extra episodes and reviews and stuff like that. Mm. Um, which uh, I'll be releasing another one of yours for free pretty soon, John. Um, and then at the highest level, which is a $40 payment once a month, uh, I will actually run a role-playing game for you and four or five of your friends, depending on what, uh, online, uh, within certain reason of the choice of game. Um, and the amount of times per month you want to do is kind of up to y'all. Um, we work, we'll work the schedule and get it done. Um, other than that, for, uh, more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm Kathy. I'm, I'm Spartacus. Gonna, I'm Spartacus. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Good night. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. God, I'm the one who's been drinking a lot. Come I on, man. I didn't drink hardly any. I guess Neither one of you guys can talk anymore. I don't know what y'all are doing. Uh, Why don't you fine. Look at this bottle. That's what I'm doing. Uh-huh. That's my excuse for not drinking.